To make this animation more interesting, we're going to use the distance from the camera to the town to play this animation forward and backward. So you might think that the camera distance patch is what we would use, but I've had no luck getting this to work, so we're going to build our own. So first, we'll put something inside this camera. So let's add a null. And we'll drag this null into the patch editor. And we can rename it to camera position. And then the other null, I think we can just use this town null, which is the origin of it here. So we'll drag that in as well. And for each of these, we want the global position. So we'll use a global transform patch. And I'll copy paste that. And be careful when you copy paste. I think doing that just pasted the entire thing that I had selected, which is a really annoying bug or whatever it is. So I'll delete that. That was duplicated up here. So with the global transform of each, we can grab the position and put that into a distance patch. And then make sure that's set to vector three because we're working with the X, Y, and Z values. And this is a vector three, but the distance is gonna be linear, so that's gonna be a single number here. So we need to take this number to control this animation. So let's add an animation player. And the progress, for now, we'll just put directly into here. The animation asset is this little running figure here. And then the animation itself goes into the model up in the scene manager under animation right here. Now we definitely need to control the output of this distance because right now it's at 1.3, so it's already above one. And we need this to go kind of from zero to one more or less. So in order to do that, let's use a range and we'll use a from range. So we can take any values and then convert that to a zero to one range. So I think at the maximum, and you can see I can kind of demo it right here. The maximum, let's say, will be, what is this? 1.78, let's say the max is two. And then the minimum, let's say maybe that's as close as we'd want it to start or end. The value here is 1.9, so let's just call that one. And it looks like I might have this backwards because as we get further away, it populates on. But you can see it working as we move the camera, which is moving this further forward and backward because we have this loop set up for the plane tracker. You can kind of see this working automatically. So let's change the minimum to two and the max to one. So now you can see as we approach it, it'll animate on. And to test this more accurately, we can click, which will lock the scene in place. And then we can use W, A, S, and D to move this camera around. So you can see as we approach, this animation plays and it populates on. And this is supposed to be a holographic projection. So let's do a little bit more work on this. In this material, under opacity, let's turn this to about 80% so we can see through it a little bit. And feel free to change this however you want, but for the color, I'm just gonna make it a little bit more blue. So I'll just add some blue into this. Maybe not too much. And now I do love particles, so let's add a particle emitter in here. And we'll also have this distance affect it. So in the town null, I'll add a particle system. And I think it'd be cool as the town animates on, this particle emitter gets larger and larger to kind of match the size of it. And as you can see, the center of this kind of starts back here and animates forward. So it might not be a perfect match, but we'll just move it a little bit forward here. Okay, so we want to control the radius of the ring as it animates on. So let's change this from a point to a ring. 
And now we have this radius we can play with. So let's add a patch. Now we can actually use this from range we already have here, because this goes from 0 to 1 as we approach this. So let's add a swizzle. And this just outputs a single value, so the swizzle will be x, x. So we'll add the from range into the value, and then we'll see how that works on this. So when it's far away, it looks like it's at 0 0.09, or basically 0 0.1. So it looks like the radius is just over the city. And as we get closer, it looks like it's almost perfectly wrapping around the whole area. Let's turn up the birth rate so we can see it better. And if you want it just to be a ring, you can have both the X and the Y be the same value. Or if you want the center to be zero, so it fills this whole area, you can just change this first x to a zero, and that way this will be a zero and this will be whatever the from range is. Now for this, I want these particles to kind of be just like holographic elements shooting up kind of slowly. So let's, in the particle, change the lifespan to maybe three, and the scale to be quite a bit larger. Let's try 0.1. And then in the tilt, let's turn that back to zero and then add a new material. And double click that and we'll re rename this to matte holographic line. And we'll change it from standard to flat. So for this, let's add a texture in the patch editor. And we're gonna get more into this in the next lesson, but for now we're gonna add a quick SDF just to make a simple line. So if we just type line here, we can get the SDF line. And if we plug this directly in, you can see we get this kind of inverted line. It's kind of hard to see. Let's turn down the frequency of this. So if you look at an individual particle, you can kind of see it's lighter on the edges and then transparent in the middle, which is not entirely what we want. So to convert this just from kind of this soft gradient into something usable, let's add a smooth step. That way we can kind of sharpen this up. And then by holding Option or Alt and hitting up and down, I'm just gonna adjust these values. So now you can see we have this nice soft line, and for the values I have a 0.2 and 0.1 here, and then I turn the half width down to negative 0.1, and that just kind of gets these smaller. And we actually don't want billboarding on, because as you can see when we're above it, they kind of still point up and down, and we want these to be kind of moving up along with the motion. So in particle, let's turn off billboarding. Now I can see they're moving in the right direction. Let's also change the spray angle default back to zero because we want these to be going straight up. And now that I see this all together, I think these particles can be way smaller. So we'll go back to the particle scale. Maybe just change it to 0 0.01. And in the material, let's make it also kind of a bluish tint. And instead of using alpha, let's change it to add, just so it's kind of a, a brighter look. It's kind of hard to see, but if you pause it, you can see these are nice and kind of holographic looking. And now that I see these particles, I think the town could be a lot more blue to really bring home the holographic look. So in the material, let's take this color and just crank up the blue. And if you want it to be really holographic, you could change it from replace to, well, alpha will make it actually so you can see through it. Or to make it look really holographic, you could change it to add or screen. And that way you get this really cool transparent effect and the more they overlap, the more you kind of see that brightness. Let's change this preview video to something that's not entirely white. So you kind of see that, how they're 
built on here. Although you lose a lot of detail when you just add because you're kind of adding on top of an already busy image. So I kind of like it just set to alpha. So you can still see through it here, but you can still actually see the details of the texture, which I really like. So it's kind of a happy medium there. And you can adjust this alpha to be as transparent or not as you want. So this setup is quite simple, but I'm going to try it out on my phone and see how it feels. Well, that worked out pretty well. There's just two things I want to add. First, for this from range that goes into the emitter, we never want this radius to be absolute zero because then all the particles are just overlapping. So let's just add an add patch here. And in this value, we can just add 0.1. That'll make sure the lowest this ever goes is 0.1 instead of zero. And then the top of this range will actually be 1.1 because this from range goes from 0 to 1 in the output. But that's fine, it'll just be a little bit larger in the radius. And my second note is that this 3D model is quite large. If we look in the actual model itself, you can see there's, I don't know, hundreds, thousands of models. And Spark doesn't love that. It took me a few tries to actually get it to open in Instagram. So what I would recommend is honestly maybe using about half as many models if you're actually making a real filter that you want to submit and have work on all sorts of different devices. So while this is more just for training, I would definitely recommend deleting a lot of the extraneous stuff, like maybe get rid of a few of these blocks or just like this whole section here. And then you're probably a little bit better shape, but I just wanted to call that out because yeah, as you can see, uh, performance does definitely diminish when you get something this large. And with each piece animated, again, it is a little bit heavy. But overall, I think this is a really cool effect, and we were able to fit a lot of detail because all these are super low poly, and the textures are all pixel-based, and so the actual texture footprint is super tiny. So if you ever want to make a whole world, this is definitely a good way to go.